What's good, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, man. My name is Deep Tequila. I appreciate you being here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today is the day we've all been waiting for. Power Worlds finally released its big content update. We have our new raid boss in game. Got a lot of updates to go along with that. A lot of new items, um, some new building structures that we can talk about as well. So I real quick just wanted to put out a little video going through, you know, kind of an overview of what all the updates were today. I do plan on releasing multiple videos covering this, but this is just going to be like more or less an overview, just talking about all the different changes that are made. Um, you can see that the, the new raid boss was implemented. Uh, you'll be able to summon the raid boss by using these slabs that are known as summoning altars. If you're struggling to figure out how to get the summoning altar, uh, the summoning altar is just unlocked in the technology tree. Uh, let me see. You scroll down to level 33 and level th level 33 you can unlock the summoning altar um, you can see I already have it unlocked but basically you have to put this in your base so that means that the raid boss will be fought in your base what I plan on doing and I'll release another video of this in a little bit um, I'm gonna make a third base specifically for fighting the raid boss uh, I'm gonna make my defensive wall structures I'm gonna have my mounted machine guns and such I'm gonna put my best fighting pals in there have my my absolute best pals in my party as well um, I, I'm going to tinker around a little bit and see what's most viable. But either way, your summoning altar is going to be unlocked in the ancient technology tree. So make sure you've been saving up your points for that. Unlock the summoning altar. Um, you can use it in whatever base, really. But I'm going to be using like a specialized base for the raid, which is kind of made easier because of one of the other updates, which is the, the new ore mining thing. You no longer necessarily have to have a specialized mining base. So more on that in just a second. Uh, the POW eggs can drop, or POW eggs can drop after defeating raid bosses, which is pretty dope. Uh, the extreme version is going to be incredibly powerful and difficult to defeat. So there's going to be multiple versions of the raid boss off rip. One is going to be like more of an introductory, still kind of a challenging version, but then you're going to have an extreme version, which I have to imagine is going to have more health, more damage, and hopefully some like interesting mechanics to make it a little bit harder as well. I haven't tried the raid boss out myself just yet, but. Um, just still, like I said, I wanted to put everything out and really get my my footing for the update before I just throw myself into there. We've got new training manuals uh, items added and new ancient techno technical manual items are added. Um, like I said, these are the different. Uh, th these will allow you to unlock more points because there's now new items in the technology trees to unlock. There's new recovery med items that have been added. Uh, using these will allow you to slowly recover your HP over time, so it's not just fully going to rely on not taking damage for X amount of time and eating food. You're also going to have active health recovery items. There's a new item known as the Homeward Thundercloud. Uh, you can unlock this through the, I think, the Ancient Technology Tree. Yeah, level 30 of the Ancient Technology Tree, you get the Homeward Thundercloud. And basically this is an instant teleport to your nearest base. So this is very useful, obviously. Uh, when you're just out in the wild, you've just done, uh, you know, one of the legendary bosses or anything like that. Uh, nowhere near base, nowhere near fast travel, don't really want to waste the time. Or if you're done playing for the day, again, you're not near your base. Just use your Homeward Thunder Clown, so that's pretty dope. You've got ability glasses, which when equipped, you can see POW stats. This is really good when you're trying to farm up specific, specific POWs with specific stats. Obviously, a lot of us have hit that point where... We've already maxed out our POW deck, and we're trying to find the best version of certain POWs. We're looking for specific passives. We're trying to breed the best passives down. So these ability glasses will kind of help to expedite that process. You'll know what passives and what stats a POW has just by looking at them. So that's pretty cool. Um, you have new stat boosting items, power fruit, life fruit, stout fruit. So these are going to be similar to some of the foods that give you the little passive buffs. Um, but obviously this is going to be somewhere in line with like the recovery meds. Now that we have recovery meds, we also have some some stat boosting items as well. Um, two new interesting things that will really help, again, with you know the, the capturing the different POWs grind is going to be Mercy Hit and the Ring of Mercy. So Mercy Hit is a new passive that can be found on different POWs. And POWs with this passive cannot reduce an enemy's hit points below one when attacking so this means that when you're trying to attack a pow like a boss a legendary or just a regular pow whatever um, you don't have to worry about accidentally killing it and that'll couple with the new item the ring of mercy which is unlocked in the ancient technology tree 
at level 19, and this will make it to where your damage doesn't take an enemy pal's hit points below one. So you've got two things, the Ring of Mercy and then the, the Mercy hit or whatever. Um, yeah, Mercy hit. So those two things coupled together should make it to where you're not accidentally killing off pals that you want to capture. So that's pretty helpful. Um, there is new armor. The multi-climate undershirt has been added, which is pretty dope because, yeah, you know, now you can protect yourself against heat and cold with just one slot. Very helpful. Uh, you've got the electric egg incubator. It's an uh, incubator that consumes electricity to automatically adjust the temperature to the optimum temperature for each egg. That's actually pretty huge. I know it's been a massive headache for myself and some of my friends as well, trying to figure out what's the ideal temperature between the the overall outside temperature, campfires, the coolers, all of that stuff, trying to figure out what's the exact right temperature for your eggs, and then obviously it changes at night time. So the incubation times of eggs, especially if you're not playing on like the default settings, if you have it like maxed out like 72 hours for huge eggs, can really fluctuate, can take sometimes a week for an egg to hatch, which is just absurd. But thankfully they have the electric egg incubator now. It's pretty dope. Um, the ore mining site is actually huge. This is what I was briefly mentioning earlier. It essentially, for me, is going to free up one of my one of my mining bases. So now I'll be able to make my raid base instead. Um, because a large focus for uh, some of these specialized bases was specifically making ore. Like most people's main base or whatever could produce the stone and the wood. And you know, I have my assembly lines there and all of that stuff. Um, but now... Uh, you can have this ore mining site so instead of having to put your base at a very specific location that has like eight ore rocks around now you can just throw out like two or three of these ore mining sites and let your your Anubis or your dig toises or your Astagons your Blazimuts whatever go to work uh, and you don't have to worry about being confined to specific locations so I think not only is this huge in terms of it really opens up the map and allows you to put a base wherever you want um, it also makes it to where the productivity is a lot higher. You don't have to spend time or even a pow slot in base running around picking up the materials, getting tired out, doing anything like that. They can literally just sit there at the ore mining site and just mine ore, which is pretty dope. Uh, let me see. The ore mining site, level 1, is unlocked at level 15 on the ancient technology tree. And then you have the ore mining site level 2 that's unlocked at level 31. So pretty massive there uh, you can see sorry the ability glasses the electric egg incubator are also unlocked here as well um, so pretty dope uh, so two new pals not two new pals but two pals now have new ranch capabilities so kelp sea can now produce pow fluids at the ranch and do mud can now produce high quality pow oil at the ranch these are two things that i've personally spent you know a couple hours each just farming up to make sure that I have enough for the different materials, the different things that I need to make, you know what I mean, around the base, um, different uh, pow balls and such, pow spheres, whatever. So being able to have a kelp sea and a dew mud in your ranch now to farm that up for you does alleviate a lot of time. That's a nice little quality of life change. It also makes sense, you know, dew mud drops a lot of high, high quality pow oil, high quality pow oil anyway. So anyways, that's nice. You can now reduce the weight of metal ore while riding a Serpent Terra. This is another very interesting change for me. Uh, I enjoy this as well because it's made it to where Serpent Terra, which is more of just a, just like a cute pow to have, but didn't really serve like a massive function, now actually has a a real function. Being one of your your party pals, um, you know, depending on what you're doing at the time, reduces the weight of metal ore. So that's a massively efficient upgrade for you know, really like mid game. So pretty dope. Increases the amount of ore that's dropped while riding your Astagon, so that's also dope as well. Can speed up the ore mining process. Again, now that you, you're going to have ore mining site and ore mining site two at your base, doesn't really matter as much. But if you're at your base, you can just hop on your Astagon and ride around and pick it all up real quick and drop it off in your in your storage chest. This is another good one. You can now raise your POWs rank to the maximum with a single synthesis. So I just tried this out earlier. I was working on raising up my Lilines in my base. I had like 60 or so, but the one that I wanted to raise up was it had no stars. So I put all 60 in and it rose it all the way up to like two and a half stars. So essentially now you can put the four, then the 16, then the 32, and you can also use whatever extras you have to work towards your next... Uh, your next breeding thing. So let me see real quick if I can show you what I'm referring to. So this is the Lilin that I was using. Pull it in my party real quick. And I think this is a really nice quality of life change because it helps to free up a lot of this this space here. You can see that uh, I've 
upgraded it to two stars and it's holding the 23 of 32 charges so you don't have to put all 32 in in one go you don't have to leave this box space as soon as you've done like a bunch of reading or whatever you can just throw in however much you have and and you're good to go so that's very nice quality of life change love that you can see that one of my b guards just fell through the ground very unfortunate buddy what are you doing there <laughs> i'll have to reset that in a minute it's okay uh, so let's see. Negative pal status will now be resolved after spending some time in the pal box. That's dope. Certain UI changes while aiming a pal sphere, it'll now display how many of the target pal you've already captured. This is good if you're trying to hit the the 10 capture bonus, but you don't want to waste any pal spheres and go over that. Um, it'll let you know that you're already at 10 of 10, or if you're close, whatever. You can now check the cooldowns on your partner skills for all your pals on the main screen. So this is pretty good. Earlier I was just fighting some of the 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 major bosses uh, some some Anubis and some Blasmuts whatever just farming up and my Jet Dragon whenever I would use my actual uh, my partner skill or whatever now whenever I'm done with it there's a little circle that pops up around the the bottom left your your pal's little thing actually I can probably just go show you real quick and it'll tell you uh, you know how much cooldown you have left so Jet Dragon's partner skill is 180 seconds and then when you're actually done with that when you use it all or whatever Oh my god, I hit the wrong button, of course. Anyways, it'll tell you how much time left you have to, to get your skill back. So I'm just going to burn it out real quick. And you can see that that's what I'm saying. So now, now I have a countdown that pops up right there. So that's pretty dope. Nice little quality of life change. We dig that. Uh, equipment and item stats are now visible on the technology screen even if you have not unlocked them first this is really dope if you're trying to figure out what's going to be more advantageous to unlock if you come down here like the where is it at like the rocket launcher tells you how much attack it has um, so that's pretty cool uh, you can a, a little bit more effectively plan what you want to do you know what I mean without the the risk of spending the technology points and be like oh fuck well that's kind of that's kind of useless. The tutorial has now been improved and renamed to Journey. If you haven't logged in in a month or so after you've completed the game or a week or so, you may notice that the Journey thing has popped back up for you. Um, there's some new Journey quests to do that are you know, pretty basic, but um, I obviously completed that a while ago. And when I first logged in today, it's been like a month since I played while, uh, while waiting on this update, and I had to, to finish up the Journey quest, but nothing major. I like the sound of Journey as opposed to tutorial. Pretty dope. So damage number display size can be changed in the game options this is pretty cool just kind of allows you to have a bit more visibility on screen it says that in the raid boss battles the damage numbers tend to overlap a lot um, so like I'm gonna have you know, 15 pals myself and then one of my party pals so 17 things fighting a raid boss at the same time and then if there's any like ads or little minions around the raid boss as well can imagine there's gonna be a lot of visual clutter so this will help to clean that up items dropped by players after death on a dedicated server can now be picked up by anyone after 24 hours of real time have passed this is pretty dope especially if you're playing on one of those dedicated servers with some of your friends i know that i've got some items that are left behind on my homie rabbit server i love you you can go pick it up now on your own <laughs> you don't have to worry about that added a new sleeping player emote that's pretty cute there's been certain base related changes and I think these are all very good quality of life changes. You can now allow and disallow certain work for base pals at the monitoring stand. Let's go ahead and show you what that looks like real quick. Have I even unlocked the monitoring stand? I never used it before because it was basically essentially just you can make your pals work harder. I obviously develop an emotional connection with my pals. I'm interesting like that. <laughs> I, I value my pals' happiness over their intense productivity. Plus, I've never been short on anything anyway, so I haven't really had to worry about it. Uh, yeah, so you can see we'll unlock the monitoring stand real quick. Go ahead and throw one of these things up. Where's it at? Got our monitoring stand. Go ahead and build this real quick. So basically, this will allow you to, to specify what things you want people doing. This was some of the leaks that people have been seeing on Twitter and such. This is so huge moving forward. Um, it will allow you to specifically assign pals to do certain things. They won't get distracted doing other things. Huge, huge, huge dub. We love to see it. I'm going to go through at some point and actually, you know, tweak this and make sure that my pals are doing exactly what I want them to do and nothing else. Make sure you have that set up at all your bases. That's pretty dope. We love to see that change chest filters have been added that's pretty dope 
Crafted items are now transported from crafting facilities. You can select allow transport. So like I have my my electric furnace is upstairs making cake before the cake would just sit on the electric furnace. Now I can just click allow transport on it and one of my pals will instantly transport that to uh, the, the, the refrigerator. And now that you have chest filters, I should be able to filter that I don't want that to go into certain food chests. I, I want it to specifically go into the refrigerator. So that's pretty dope as well. You can now edit your character's appearance by any time using the antique dresser. We'd love to see that. The antique dresser is another one that's going to be in the ancient technology tree. It is at level 24. So pretty cool there. I'm a huge uh, aesthetic person. Makes me very happy. Some of the building and building placement rules have been relaxed. You can now connect stairs facing upwards. This makes it a lot less tricky to try to uh, you know, make multiple floored buildings. Roof pieces can now correct can now directly connect to foundations. Excuse my stuttering. Triangular walls can now be connected to stairs. Pretty dope. You can now force a pal to work and cancel their break by picking them up and throwing them towards a facility, but be careful. This uh, will make it to where they're not recovering their sand. They usually recover their sanity while taking a break, so you can stop them from taking a break if you absolutely need something at that exact time, but just be careful doing that. Fixed assignments will remain fixed even after bad events recur. So if like a raid happens or something and your pals all stop to fight, they don't always necessarily go back to the assignment that you have them fixed on. Now they should go back to their fixed assignment and you also have the increased um, control over that with the monitoring stand. You can just disallow them to do whatever. You can also disallow them from, from fighting. So if you have certain pals that you don't want them to help if your base gets raided, you can cut that off as well. They may still be attacked, but they'll continue focusing on their thing. We got certain balance adjustments as well. Minimum heat and cold resistance have been added to various armor. Uh, you will no longer need to take off your heat resistant armor when it is cold at night in the starting areas. Pretty dope. Reduce the button press time in the incubator. That's pretty wonderful because it makes sure you don't have to spend as much time just hatching the eggs after they're already incubated. It changes the pattern for Jormantide Ignis to something more unique. Let me see if I can go show you real quick because like I said I'm a big aesthetic person I've got a German Tide Ignis up here making some cakes let's see if we can get a good look at them real quick might already be done making the cakes you can see German Tide Ignis already looks pretty dope we dig it we dig it this is a straight up cutie pie you know what I mean love to see it go ahead and have my dude start making cakes oh my flower whatever I gotta go collect my flower it's okay anyways has a more unique uh little appearance or whatever they've added more legendary blueprints for some firearms dropped from specific enemies so more to follow on that once I actually find out what legendary blueprints have been added that's pretty dope love to see it corrected the selling price of diamonds in single player it is no longer possible to select the initial spawn point for multiplayer they've blocked the back of the starting area with rocks to prevent players from getting lost or stuck I am guilty of this I like to adventure a little bit too much, glitched myself out, had to close the game out and load back in when I was first starting out. It is what it is, they fixed that. The increased attack power multiplier partner skills that increase the player's attack power while riding has been uniformly reduced from 2.0 to 1.2. This is technically a nerf, but not that big of a deal, still pretty good. You still get a little attack multiplier. It is what it is, you'll be all right. Eggs now have a small chance to produce alpha pals. This is just a small note in here that actually is so profound and has such big meaning. Because at the moment, there's been this massive trade-off in terms of, well, do you want alpha pals and continue farming alpha pals to try to get the best passives? Or do you want to breed your best passives and forego the benefit of having an alpha pal? Typically, alpha pals have more, um, more advanced IVs. They're typically a little bit stronger, have more health, whatever. Um, whereas the pals that you breed typically have the benefit of having like all four good passives. Now you have a chance of getting an alpha pal with all four good passives simply through breeding. So pretty dope. It does say that's a small chance, but obviously getting you know the the god tier roll on IVs and all four passives is also a small chance as well. So for those of you who really enjoy getting the perfect roll on a pal, you now have a chance to make it even better. Flying and floating pals are now immune to falling damage. I think for the most part, this was already good to go. This is just going to apply to certain pals that that wasn't already applied to. And there was some shop price adjustments as well. There's some various bug fixes. Fix the bug where treasure chests become empty, dying in a dungeon. 
fixed an issue where the effect that increases the player's attack power while riding was duplicating and accumulating under certain conditions, fixed an issue where players were not receiving loot when capturing POWs while mounted, it's very annoying, especially when you're trying to do like some of the aforementioned methods of farming up POW wheel and stuff, although now you can use the Cubs in your ranch, adjusted the HP of the legendary POWs and fixed an issue where the difference in HP between the captured legendary POW and the bred legendary POW was too large. This is also pretty dope and touches into being able to breed the alpha POWs because now you have more of an incentive to breed the legendaries. I, for instance, haven't really focused on breeding too many legendary POWs because when you have a legendary jet dragon with, you know, 9,000 health, versus a bread dragon that has like a thousand health well obviously the one that has nine thousand health is, is a massive difference even if it doesn't have the best passives so now that difference is smaller you also have a chance of breeding an alpha pal anyway so breeding legendaries just got a lot more rewarding fixed an issue where a pal would eat while riding fixed an issue where spheres thrown close to wild pals would not hit and be lost it's very annoying very annoying I've lost quite a bit of legendary spheres off of where I thought they would hit. Wasn't close enough though. It is what it is, but now it's fixed, so good to go. Improved various POW models and textures, added and adjusted some side effects, sound effects, many other minor bug fixes. They fixed an issue where sorting did not work in the server list for dedicated servers. Improved the server list to allow page transitions. Dedicated servers now support various log outputs. Implemented REST API. Uh, there's some more details it says here. Uh, they've done some upgrades to cheat prevention, they added a new song to the soundtrack, and they're already planning a larger, more content-packed update for summer 2024. Enjoy never-before-seen scenery and thrilling adventures on a new island, home to many new pals. This is going to be the update, I believe, that brings us the tree, so pretty excited for that one. In addition, we plan to add a large amount of new content, including new buildings, weapons, and tower bosses. Thank you for your continued support of Power Room. I think this is a massive W update, definitely 10 out of 10, I'm loving it, I'm enjoying it, like I said I haven't really played Power the past couple weeks because I've been waiting on this update to drop, um, really excited to get into it, I obviously have to tweak some of my bases, I need to go ahead and make a raiding base specifically so I can tackle this raid boss, I'd like to get that done as soon as possible for you, um, I'm going to have some more videos put out as time goes by, I'm probably going to make a short talking about each one of these new items so there's gonna be multiple shorts that are released I'm also gonna make a video showing how I'm building and how I set up my raid base to take on the raid boss and then I'm also gonna make another video of me actually fighting the raid boss I have to imagine it's not gonna be as simple as you know some of the towers where you just go in there with one set team pal type like you know facing the the dark pals you wanna have your dragons and whatever I have to imagine there's gonna be some specific mechanics I throw a wrench in my strategy and make it a little bit harder, which is what I'm anticipating, what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that my first couple tries I fail. I do enjoy that. I want it to be a very rewarding experience for myself and for y'all as well. So, anyways, man, this is a huge update. Let me know what y'all think. If you have any questions, if you want me to break down anything, I'd be more than happy to. I'm going to be spending the next couple weeks or so, I imagine, just dissecting this update fully. Um, should have some more stuff coming for you guys soon. But, yeah, man, if you stuck around this long, I appreciate you. I love you. Very excited to share this news with y'all, man. Can't wait to get into it. I hope y'all are excited as well. Stay safe. Have a wonderful day. Peace.